So you've just picked up Empire War from Steam. You followed Corey's video on how to download and play the Thrawn's Revenge mod from the workshop page and attempted to play single player Galactic Conquest or perhaps you've just jumped into a lobby with your friend who told you to buy the game. You pick the New Republic and you're looking at the selection of ships and you're already feeling a little overwhelmed. Well in today's video we're breaking down the best practices, ships and tactics to help you win your battles in Empire War Thrawn's Revenge. Now just to be clear, everything we talk about today revolves around the 2.3.6 patch that was released earlier June this year and whilst we're looking at doing videos like these for every faction myself and Eckhart's Ladder has released videos respectively that cover how to win galactic conquests and skirmish game modes here we're actually looking at the factions in more detail so by the end of the video you'll have some knowledge to do things like this and not things like this And of course, my question of the day is, what is the one thing you like and dislike about the New Republic faction in Thrawn's Revenge? For me, I love the fact that the faction makes you focus more on utility rather than simply outputting more damage. However, I dislike the stress that comes with micromanaging your ships. I'm a simple man. I struggle to manage more than like two things at a time. Of course, let me know your answers in the comments section down below. So first on the list is fighters. Honestly, X-Wings, B-Wings and K-Wings are kings when it comes to skirmish. When used correctly, of course. All three types of fighters are incredibly durable, meaning they can last an insanely long time thanks to their shields compared to fighters like the TIE Fighter or TIE Bomber. A-Wings are not as effective, but thanks to their speeds, it can be vital for movement across the map. B-Wings are insane for their value, purely because no more than three of them can get the job done for destroying frigates or cruisers shields insanely fast. Not to mention how fast they can take out asteroids held by your opponent and get out alive thanks to their shielding. K-Wings take this concept a step further. Whilst being significantly more expensive per unit, a bunch of them can absolutely destroy high priority target shields in a flash. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. The enemy's space station shields are completely destroyed in a matter of seconds. And with the slam active ability, they can get out just as fast. Plus, their high hull and shields make it impossible for the enemy to counter the attack in time. Whilst this method might not be used as frequently as skirmish, having them weave into battles to perform their bombing run and then escaping to recharge their shields is an insanely effective way to utilize B-Wing and K-Wing's damage outputs efficiently and consistently without much risk. Next up on the chain are the New Republic Corvettes, Frigates and some cruiser classes of ships. Nebulon B frigates are incredibly strong when managed well. Their use of their active ability to regen shields allow them to become deceptively tanky. However, when ignored, they will crumble easily. Whilst their firepower may not be some of the best out there, with a single light turbo laser and two light laser cannons, they can be overwhelmed, but with their incredibly cheap price, it allows you to build swarms of them very quickly. When a large selection of them are being used as a front line for your carriers and other glass cannons like the Boffin Assault Cruiser, it can be hard to keep an eye on all of them to know when you need to boost the shields at the right time. But when performed correctly, it can be very effective. And as for anti-fighters, the Corellian Corvettes may not be as effective to remove fighters from the field, but their low cost makes it more accessible when in a pinch. The Quasar is an absolutely fantastic carrier that does its job incredibly well, spawning three squadrons at a time for 1,300 credits. It allows users to spam quickly purely based on how strong and durable the New Republic fighters are. However, with the Nebulon B frigates being able to spawn a squadron of X-Wings as well, it somewhat trumps the fighter spam playstyle. However, the star of the show is the MC-40A, with a well-rounded hull and shields and effective damage output. For 3,000 credits, it is an absolute steal. With their boost shield power active, it can also make them very hard to damage and thrive well in longer battles. The Assault Frigate is a secondary option, which provides 
provides more power at a lower price point, yet at a much larger risk. For Galactic Conquests, the risk is minimal, but for real-time skirmish battles, the risk can make or break you. So unless you're very ahead in the game, it's not worth the chance. Finally, the last round of ships are the heavy cruisers and capital ships. For Galactic Conquest, there is no competition to the MC-80B, MC-90, Home 1 and Viscount. Insanely well-rounded ships with incredible defensive capabilities that make it a low-risk ship with high reward. For Skirmish, it's somewhat different. Viscounts are not optional and the price difference between MC-90 and the Home 1 make the MC-90 just not viable for its price. For 5,000 credits more, you're getting two times the value when choosing for Home 1 over the MC-90. But if you're able to build the Home 1, it's likely you've won the game. But going back to more reasonable prices, the MC-80B is definitely the strongest ship you can build whilst the game is still undecided. The hull and shields are fantastic, and the damage output and range is exactly what you need, and the ability to regen shields fast make it one of the most durable ships in Skirmish overall. Its shortcomings are definitely against larger objectives, like the enemy space station, or perhaps the Allegiance battlecruiser, but be sure to have a strong fleet with at least one or two of them ready to go. Well, that is everything. Whilst we did cover a lot of this in our general overview video on how to win skirmish matches a few days ago, our next episode will cover everything from the Empire faction, which does have a little bit of a different playstyle. But before I go, let me remind you of the question of the day, which is what is the one thing you like and dislike about the New Republic faction in Thrawn's Revenge? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you've made it to this part of the video, why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell? so you can be notified of when our Empire video will be released. And finally, I have been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.